Hello everyone and welcome to another video. It is Francesco here. Welcome to the Key Productive YouTube channel. If you are brand new and if you're a regular, welcome back. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is diving into Dropbox paper. Now this is something that I reviewed in December 2015. So it's taken me a fair while to come back to it, but I've been getting a few questions and comments about the experience and a couple of times in the Tools They Use podcast, many people are bringing this up as a tool they use on a regular basis. So in today's video, what I wanna do with you guys is show you what's new with Dropbox Paper and also dive into how it slightly differs from Google Docs. So guys, just before we go, one little message from me. If you're not on the Skillshare class yet for picking the best to-do list application, it'd be great to have you. I'll include the link in the description. You get two months free Skillshare if you're a brand new member, which is awesome. So feel free to join in the description below. Without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are with Dropbox Paper, and it has been actually quite a while, maybe three months since I last checked in with the application, but I do tend to make a regular visit over here, and something that, I think a belated video, is definitely in order. So as you can see here, this is the paper dashboard, and from the last video I did, it has changed quite a lot. So what I wanna do is start by talking a little bit about the features and functions that have been added here. The first of which is connect paper to Slack. Now this is something that they have added uh, quite recently and the main sort of reason behind this is to help you connect with your existing team members. I know a lot of the teams sort of like startups that are using this tend to connect with Slack mainly because it's their choice of team communication tool and actually having a way to connect with the resource makes it easier. I actually have this one set up with a Slack already, um, and it automatically brings in stuff um, from that Slack, the sort of files I share, and also it makes it easier to share the files inside of Slack. So it does make a whole load of difference <laughs> and speed when you go across your day. Moving on to importing docs files. So importing docs, is something that they've introduced um, since the last one. They had this in sort of beta version when I was testing it last, but the file ability, so being able to bring in a doc to modify, it's actually something that I think a lot of people will save a lot of time on. So the ability to create meeting notes based on calendar events is again, a very impressive feature. You can either connect to your Google Calendar, and that can be Google Apps One, or your Office 365. And whenever you have a new meeting, this can be really handy for Teams, especially if you've got team specific paper and you're wanting to be the scribe for the meeting, then you can do so. Uh, just by connecting it to Office 365 uh, or your Google Apps account, making it super handy, especially when you're getting started. So the next sort of experience is the notes and document experience, and this has been really refreshed. I think that everything on there previously looked great, and it's just been enhanced by that. They've recently introduced templates, the ability to access project plans, uh, all sorts of different templates that really do save you time, but they are much more interactive. You've got the ability to, in the project plan, for example, modify a table in quite uh, an advanced method, um, sort of giving you a bit more setup, almost like Notion to some extent, um, but maybe not so detailed. Now, as we move down, you've also got the ability to access word count now. Uh, you can see the comment history, you actually have offline access, which is pretty impressive. Something that I sort of wish they had in the sort of first initial beta. Um, and they've also got download to Markdown 2, which is a nice addition. Now on the right hand panel, you do have a things to do section now. So you can actually assign items to other people or to yourself and actually have a panel for the things you do, which is pretty damn impressive. You've also got the ability to follow updates in folders, which again, very helpful, uh, such a minor update, but something very useful. I know Google Docs are sort of challenging themselves to try and do this sort of experience, but are sort of struggling. Now, you've also got the ability to link it to an event. So for example, let's say you didn't have the Google Office 365 set up, or you did and you forgot to link it to an event, you can do so afterwards. Now, jumping back to the templates, the templates are something that they push you on when you re-enter 
Dropbox paper and you can create one from a template which is good or you can just use a blank one. Now for example uh, you've got project plan but you've also got a host of other ones, reference lists, um, tables that are pre-created um, around certain topics which is very very helpful. Now one of the things that a lot of people do put in the comments like how does this compare to Google Docs? I will be doing a full comparison view review very soon, a side by side checklist of what each of these sort of do different. I would say the thing that Dropbox Paper does notably above Google Docs is the multimedia representation. I think that the ability to add uh, videos and images, um, I mean the other day when um, Deanna was doing a storyboard for the new community sort of logo in here on Keep Productive, she was sharing some great images and it was great to be able to view this in Dropbox Paper and actually make comments on the side and give all of the feedback that I needed to. So it's actually a really effective way to do this and I think Google Drive really doesn't do it as well. It's been very static in its updates and fluidity compared to paper in the last few years. So guys, there are a few of the new updates. Um, as you can see, it's a, a gorgeous experience and it continues to evolve. Um, again, I did remember saying in the first video, you know, let's hold out on this one because potentially it might not be what <laughs> sort of it, it you know, uh, expectations kick of it. And a lot of the time, it's sort of like with uh, Google, they tend to drop these projects, but I think paper's here to stick. And that wasn't a pun on words. Um, paper is here to stay. Um, it is, uh, I think, a resource that a lot of people are using, especially teams, especially startup teams, the ones that are tedious on Google Docs, um, but sort of want to use Dropbox as a storage and collaborative experience. So guys, let me know in the comments, do you use Dropbox Paper? And do you think it's a viable solution for you and your team? It'd be great to hear, but I do think it's something that is up and coming and definitely deserves your attention. Anyway guys, if you haven't yet subscribed, it'd be great to have you a subscriber here on the Keep Productive community. Make sure to hit that bell notification and the subscription button and feel free to join the Facebook group as well. But it'd be great to have you. Uh, but if you want to return for another video, it'd be great as well. But for now, make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.